Good day everyone. Today we are going to talk about binomial distribution. Now in many situations we are interested in the probability that an event will occur x times out of n. So for example, if you are playing basketball you are interested perhaps in the number of shots that you are going to take out of the total attempts. Now, how do we know that it is a binomial distribution? So the first condition is it must be discrete. And this discrete random variable must contain two possible results. Success if some event occurs and then failure if the event does not occur. For example, if you are tossing a coin, it's either a head or a tail. And if you want success to be the head, then that means a tail or not head is the failure. Then second is if we repeat this experiment in a number of independent trials, meaning in each trial, the probability must be independent and not dependent on each other. So, for example, if you're going to toss, let's say, a coin uh, five times, in all of those five trials, the probability of getting a success, of getting a hit, is the same in all of those five trials. Then the probability of success P is constant for all trials, and it follows that the probability of failure is 1 minus p, or the complement of p. Now, let's take a look at these examples and let's identify whether they are binomial distribution or not. The first one is a coin is thrown 100 times. The variable is the number of heads. Okay, so this is a binomial distribution because a coin has two possible outcomes, head or tails, and each toss is independent of every other toss. What about letter B? A, uh, a box contains five blue and three red marbles. I draw out five marbles, replacing the marble each time. So the variable is the number of red marbles drawn. Okay, so what do you think? Is this binomial or not? Okay, it is because we can draw out a red or blue marbles with the same chances each time. What about this next example? A box contains five blue and three red marbles. I draw out five marbles. I do not replace the marbles that are drawn. The variable is the number of marbles drawn. Okay, but because there is no replacement at all, then it means that the probability of each draw is dependent upon the result of the previous draw. So that means this is uh, not binomial distribution. What about the last example? A large bin contains 10,000 bolts, 1% of which are faulty. I draw a sample of 10 bolts from the bin, and the variable is the number of faulty bolts. Okay, so this one, uh, this is not going to be binomial distribution if we assume that the 10 bolts are going to be drawn without replacement. Now, if there is replacement, okay, so those are the conditions whether a distribution is a binomial or not. Okay, now let's have our first example. This is the uh, random experiment, and that is rolling a die three times, and the random uh, variable is the number of sixes. So this is a discrete random variable. So what do you think will be the values of uh, the random variable? So let's construct a table of probability distribution. So x's will be 0, 1, 2, and 3. So 0 meaning no 6. There could be 1 6, 2 6s, and 3 6s. So if we're going to construct a probability distribution, of course we are interested with the sample space. And what is the sample space? That is 6 to the power of 3, or 6 times 6 times 6. Let's begin with the easiest one, So and that is having 3 6s. And... Um, there is only one possibility when you roll a die three times so we could have we can have a six a six and a six so that will be now one over 216 because the sample space is 216 what about getting a zero getting getting a zero um, getting a zero that will be uh, for the first roll it's either one, two, three, four, five, and no six at all. So that means there are five possibilities there. Second, third, that means our uh, probability of x equals zero is equal to 125 over 216. 
What about if we're go going to get 1, 6? So when you roll a die, first one, so we get a 6. But uh, second roll, we didn't get a 6. Third roll, we didn't get a 6. Okay. Now we can also have this combination where in, in the second roll, we have the 6. And in the third combination, we have a 6 in the third roll. So getting the sum of this, we are going to get 75 over 216. Now, uh, what about getting two sixes? So we have this possibility, 5 times 1 times 1. 1 here, it means uh, in the second roll, we get a 6. Third roll, we also get a 6. We can also have this combination wherein we get a 6 in the first and second roll. And the last one in which we got a 6 in the first roll and in the third roll. Rolled. Okay, so that will be 5 times uh, 5 plus 5 plus 5, and our probability is 15 over 216. So one way for you to check is the total probabilities must be equal to 1. So this is a discrete probability distribution, but we can make this a binomial distribution. So in what way? Alright, so we can denote S as a... a, a Now we, okay, now we can make this a binomial distribution. Okay, so we can denote uh, S as our success in which we are going to get a 6. And then if not, that would be our failure and that is an F, which is not a 6. Alright, so if there's no 6, then we can have F failure in the first roll. Second roll is also a failure. Then third roll is also a failure. So getting a failure, the probability is 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 5 over 6. In short, 5 over 6 to the power of 3. Now, if we want 1, 6, where the value of the variable is, is 1, we can have FFS. First roll is failure. Second roll is failure. Then third roll is a success. The probability of getting a 6 is 1 over 6. So which means, uh, but this is not the only combination. We can have a success in the second row. We get a 6 in the second row, and we also get a 6 in the first row. So uh, in short, we can have 3 times 1 over 6 times 5 over 6 to the power of 2. Then two sixes, we can have FSS, SFS, and SSF. So, in short, we can have 3 times 1 over 6 square times 5 over 6. Then what about 3 sixes? x equals 3, meaning we have success, success, success. And probability of success is 1 over 6. That means we will have 1 over 6 to the power of 3. All right? Now, we can summarize that using a binomial probability distribution table, and it's going to look like this. You can do it vertically or horizontally. So, 0, 5 over 6 cubed, 1, 3 times 1 over 6, 5 over 6 square, 2, 3 times 1 over 6 square, 5 over 6, and then 3 is 1 over 6 cubed. Now, um, can you see a pattern here? All right. Very good. Now, the coefficients here, which are 1, 3, 3, 1, they are actually what? A combination of 3 taken x, right? Then 1 over 6 is our probability of success. So if x is equal to 1, we have 1 over 6 raised to the power of 1. If x is equal to 0, we have 1 over 6 raised to 0. So that's why we have 1 over 6 to the power of x. Then for 5 over 6, we have 3 minus x. So this is now our binomial uh, probability function, okay? And that is our p of x. And this is for x equals 0, 1, 2, and 3, all right? So uh, let's take a look at uh, example number 2. A spinner has three blue edges and one, and one white edge. It will be spanned three times. Now our random variable is finishing on blue. So to make it a binomial uh, random variable, uh, success will be finishing on blue 
and then failure will be finishing on not blue or finishing on the white edge okay so this is a binomial distribution so let's have a binomial probability distribution table so what do you think so we have the values to be 0 1 2 and 3 so it's the same thing because we're spinning our spinner three times okay now the probability of success that is probability of getting a blue is 3 over 4 probability of getting a white is 1 over 4 so meaning if we if we want 0 blue we are going to have this probability which is 1 over 4 to the power of 3 if it is 1 we will have 3 times 3 fourths times 1 over 4 square so this is this example is similar to the first one all right but it's just that the probability of success is different if x is equal to 2 it's going to be 3 times 3 fourths squared times 1 fourth and if x is equal to 3 so we're going to have SSS and that is 3 fourths to the power of 3 so we can come up with a binomial probability function and that is going to be 3 taken x 3 fourths to the power of x then times 1 fourth to the power of 3 minus x for x equals 0 1 2 and 3 so in general our n here in general this is going to be our formula n taken x where n is independent trials the number of trials the number of independent trials okay then x here is the value of the random variable our p here is the probability of success and 1 minus p is the complement of p which is the probability of failure okay so this looks very familiar because this one is somewhat the same or very similar to the binomial theorem okay so this is our binomial probability distribution function now let's take a look at example number three toss a die five times the variable x is the number of sixes find the probability of x equals two now what does it mean probability of x equals two it means the probability of getting exactly two sixes two sixes when you when we when we toss a die five times okay now let's use a formula so this is our formula n is uh, the number of independent trials which is five okay x is 2 probability of uh, success is 1 over 6 right when you toss a die and then you want to get a 6 that would be 1 over 6 so 1 minus p is 5 over 6 so probability of x equals 2 5 taken 2 1 over 6 to the power of 2 then 5 over 6 to the power of 3 take note that 2 plus 3 here should be equal to 5 all right so we will now have our probability to be 625 over 3,888. Okay, now let's have the fourth example. Assuming that the births of boys and girls are equally likely, calculate the probability that in a family of six children, A, all the children are boys, B, there are exactly two boys, C, there are more than four girls, then D, there are more boys than girls. So let's start with uh, with letter A. All these children are boys. So when you're answering this problem, we're in the uh, random variable is actually not stated. So you can make your own assumption. So let us assume that our random variable is having a boy. But you can also do it uh, where in your assumption is uh, having a girl. So using uh, the formula, what is our n? Our n is 6 our x is all the children are boys so that means our x is also equal to 6 then the probability of getting a boy is 1 half then 1 minus p which is probability of getting a girl or not boy is also 1 half so plugging in those values we will have 6 taken 6 0.5 or 1 half to the power of 6 then 0.5 to the power of 0 so the answer is 1 over 64. Let's go to letter B. There are exactly two boys. Exactly two boys. So meaning probability of X equals 2. Okay. So it's the same thing. N is 6. So that means we will have 6 taken to 0.5 
raised to the power of 2, remember this is uh, 0.5 probability of success raised to the power of x, then 0.5 raised to the power of 4. Okay, so using your calculator, we will get 0.234 in three significant figures. Now, what about letter C? There are more than four girls. There are more than four girls, but our random variable is having a boy. So having more than four girls, meaning there are five girls, it implies that five girls, that means there's one boy, or six girls, then zero boy, okay? So let's use, we, so we have two cases here, all right? So let's use the formula for each case. So five girls and one boy, meaning x is equal to one, one boy. So that will be six taken one, 0.5 to the power of one uh, times 0.5 to the power of five. While in the second case, six girls, zero boy, our x here is zero. So which means six taken zero times 0.5 to the power of zero times 0.5 to the power of six. Then you get the sum of both, so we will get 7 over 64, okay? So that will be the probability. Now, what about D? There are more boys than girls. So one case could be there are four boys and two girls, so four is greater than two. Second case, five, go five boys, one girl, and then the last case will be six boys, zero girl. We cannot have three boys, three girls, because what we want is... There must be more boys than girls. So let's find the probabilities now for each case. So the first one is uh, four boys. This is our random variable. So six taken four, 0.5 to the power of four, 0.5 squared. Second case, there are five boys, so six taken five. And for the last case, six boys, that will be six taken six, 0.5 to the power of six, then 0.5 to the power of zero. Then let's get the sum of the probabilities and we will get 11 over 32.